Brian here with Dark Rangers Inc. and I'm with my good friend and business partner, Aaron. Aaron, welcome to the channel. Hey, thanks, Ryan. So we have a really cool announcement uh, for everybody. We're sitting on eight acres of land that we have purchased to do the Dark Ranger Inc. remote observatory. We're sitting here at 8,000 feet of elevation and we are in pretty much Bortle One skies. We're about five hours outside of Phoenix. Yep, right at five hours. And so we're almost to New Mexico, the eastern portion of Arizona. And so the skies are super dark. We did get a chance to sample them last night and we'll take the GoPro with us and show you what the skies look like on the camera that we're current shooting with. But we do have big plans. We wanna do one building to begin with, probably 20 to 24 scopes. And then we have enough room for probably six to eight buildings. Yeah, we can do six definitely. And looking forward to hopefully getting eight in there. So we wanna open up some of the best skies in the country to as many people as possible. We know right now the demand for remote observatories is greater than the supply. And this is gonna be really awesome because I've not been able to give my full attention to the channel and to you guys. And the goal really is to get this going and allow this to be a full-time thing. Right behind us, we have a fifth wheel so we can stay out here for days at a time. We have a skid steer that can hold. 3,400 pounds is a lift uh, capacity on it. It'll reach about nine foot six. So we're gonna be able to take pretty much any size scope that folks wanna get out here and we're gonna have a slide off roof situation. So we're gonna keep everything safe, have it up to uh, high speed internet and just make it a really good experience. And then we really wanna build a community. So that's the big difference. We wanna make sure that it's interactive, get folks that wanna work together if they so choose, combine hours, make some really cool images, uh, have monthly calls and check-ins. We can do processing workshops. All of that's gonna be included in your membership. And we're really trying to make this a really high-end experience for you guys. We're gonna have peers of different sizes, depending on what the needs, from six all the way up to potentially 12 inches in diameter, just to fit different scope sizes. And we're gonna give each of them a good amount of room to breathe. So we don't really wanna pack the scopes in there. And we're gonna really go out of our way to build a really quality facility for you guys. So we'll take you on a, just a quick tour. There's not much out here. We, we, you know, we're just getting it set up here. Uh, and then tonight we'll show you some of the images that we're getting of the Milky Way. I just brought a star tracker and the, uh, my Nikon. I almost wish I would have brought a scope now after seeing how good the, the skies were last night. But guys, I've been to New Mexico, Texas, uh, Southern California, Arizona, Utah, all over. Some of the best skies in the country and these are right up there with it. So. It's going to be an awesome opportunity for folks from all over the country and anywhere you're willing to send a scope to get some of the best skies available. And so with that, let's show you around a little bit and then we'll catch up later tonight where we're going to be able to show you kind of what the images look like as they're coming in off the camera. All right, guys, here we go. As you can see, I do have my uh, camera I was just shooting the video on. I've got the little move, shoot, move setup that I did a video on with the little laser pointer and their little alt as mount. So this is pretty cool. We'll get some Milky Way, maybe row a few key on there. I do have a 70 to 200, but it really can't handle that. And next time, I'm definitely gonna have to bring out the scope. As you can see, we've got the big fifth wheel here. So we'll be able to, you know, come out here and stay comfortably when we're doing scope installs. And we want to make sure that we're available. And we're actually planning on moving out into a town nearby as well. So we want to be within striking distance. That way, if there is a problem, we can get out and we can get it solved and running for you we got the ranger and then a big connex building is it 40 by nine feet 40 feet by nine feet 40 feet by nine feet high so plenty of room for storage we're actually looking at getting another one and then we do have um, a little barn here as well so where we're gonna do a lot of the building is gonna be back here as you can see it's just a big kind of flat area. So we'll have an unimpeded view of the southern skies or that way, north obviously behind. But that tall tree right there, it's kind of the edge of the property line and we can build all the way down. So we have a ton of room and you can just see a quick 360. There's really nothing that's gonna be blocking the views at all. Uh, so you'll really get a good bang for your buck in terms of being able to shoot any target you want and so we're really excited about that and then like i said we have room 
to eventually put a house on there so we can host workshops and you guys can really come out and experience it. Uh, I know not everyone's into it, but I know some of you guys were looking to do like a little gun range. We've got the UTV, there's endless trails to go out and have fun. So there's also a ski resort. There is, yeah, about yeah. 35 minutes from here. Yeah, so there's a ski resort too if you come in the winter. So a lot of fun stuff to do. It's beautiful hiking everywhere. And then the nearest town has a population of 39 people down from uh, 46 in 2015, but it does have a small grocery store and, and you know, what we need to, you know, kind of survive out here. But um, yeah, this is it. As you can see, it's just a really ideal place. Just put a nice remote observatory and we're really excited to, you know, have you guys be a part of it. And uh, just looking forward to getting the first scopes out here and sharing these skies with you. Can't wait to get one out myself. Admittedly, it's like being a kid in a candy store out here, uh, but uh, yeah, exciting stuff. And in a little bit, we'll show you guys what the uh, actual data looks like coming in on just a simple camera lens setup. And then you can only imagine what it's gonna look like once we get um, some scopes and some cameras out here. So we'll check in a little bit later with that. All right, here we are. It is nighttime and I've got the laser. It's just clipping this one little area. There we go. Like that. Okay, so now the laser on the move, shoot, move thing has a clear shot. So you can see, and essentially what we want to do, that's due north. We want to point it at Polaris. I don't think you're going to be able to see it with the GoPro, but you can very easily see it's pointing right now, basically dead on it. I've got it lined up. It is a very bright laser, which is cool. And so what I can do is use, loosen this guy to then rotate the camera because we want it facing due south. So I'm gonna tighten that down. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. Turn the laser off. So we'll secure that one. And then we've got this one right here which will allow this to move up. And then we actually have a third one. So this can actually come out another way, but we don't really need all that adjustment. So I'm gonna loosen this so we can tilt it back a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the camera. I've got my Nikon uh, 24 to 70 f 2.8. They're um, S series lens, my newest lens, but this one's been out for a while, but it's kind of their best zoom lens if you actually want to have uh, the ability to kind of focus in on some of the larger uh, deep space objects like i want to get the milky way and row of i go ahead and put it on manual and then i'm going to turn the light off apologize for my crack screen and then i take the little red dot or red square and i i find a star and i zoom all the way in on it and then i've got the focus ring up here the front and basically all I'm trying to do is get that dot to be as small as possible. And then just kind of find that sweet spot. And now I just want to frame it up. So I've got it at six seconds. It's not all the way dark yet. I'm going to bump it up to 1600. So normally I'd go longer than six seconds, but all we're trying to do is just see enough of the Milky Way to frame it. Then set a delay timer, like five seconds. So I do is five seconds, you can see the light flashing. Now from me touching it and pushing the start button, you won't have any jiggle in the camera, which will cause it to not look good in terms of the star sharpness. Let's go ahead and take a look. There we go. So we can really see, you know, the Milky Way's there, Rofuki's right there. If we wanted to go down a little bit to actually get the landscape, we could do that. And then right now I have it set at like 20, right around 24 millimeters. We're gonna shoot it much tighter. Um, Cause what I really want is to continue kind of where I left off last night. I can show you guys that. So there was kind of the composition last night. You have the Milky Way and then Row of Fuki's right there at 70 millimeters. So I wanna kind of get more of that. And then uh, that way I can try to get like an hour or two to stack together. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the thumbnail for this video. So we'll do wide angle and uh, see how it turns out. I wanted to pause real quick and actually show you guys how I did the thumbnail because I've never showed you guys any type of composite work for Milky Way or in Photoshop. 
So here is just kind of the base framing, a single image. One of the things that was really awesome about looking at all the frames, you can't see the horizon in this, although it is kind of right below where we're at, but even when I shot at wider uh, focal lengths, there was absolutely no light domes on the horizon whatsoever. And it's very rare to see that even in some national parks and places that are way outside of any civilization, you still see some small light domes and there are absolutely none. So that was really exciting. Here's the stacked image and you'll see why it's kind of pushed up here. Did some different adjustment layers to it. And then this was the landscape. So uh, I took this probably a little bit between blue hour and dusk. So you have golden hour, then blue hour, then dusk, you know, after sunset. This looked a little bit bright in here. So I did an adjustment where I left all this because I didn't want this to be any darker. I wanted to see a little bit of the green in detail. But then this just kind of darkened this center area. And then I took a photo uh, right as you know it was getting dark of us and then cut us out of the background. So there was actual Milky Way in the shot. Obviously this is at like 70 millimeters and this was probably shot at all at 24. So if it does look, you know, that was intentional just to kind of give it like a really kind of cool effect. Uh, we were a little bit bright, so I think I did a few layers to kind of darken us and then a final color adjustment layer to make everything pop. So I haven't showed you guys any composite stuff, but this is why Photoshop is so amazing. It does a lot of stuff you can't do in PixInsight. I will never not use it. So anyway, we'll go back to the video from there. When I am ready to go long, I go to N for Northern Hemisphere, and now it's actually acting as a star tracker so I can do longer exposures. I find 60 seconds is pretty forgiving um, with this setup, as long as you go ahead and program, program in that delay. And then tonight I'll do it on an intervalometer so that it just keeps shooting over and over again and I don't have to stay out here and, and maintain and watch it. All right guys, well it's a couple days later and I wanted to just kind of show you what we were able to get out of the camera and just go through what, what we ended up with. So uh, as I said, the skies were absolutely amazing. The ability to, uh, we'll go back to, this is just a completely unedited straight out of camera image. So in the naked eye to very easily see both sides of the cloud here. So the top, bottom, and then the dark side. Even some of these tendrils starting to flare out, you could see with just the naked eye if you gave yourself a few minutes to adjust. Here's kind of a, just a quick edit I did here in Photoshop in just a couple minutes. And then stacking a bunch of those 60 second exposures. You can see the blue horse head, Roofuki. Not a ton of data. Uh, again, the, the point was really just to get an idea in person. I've seen a lot of the best guys in the country and I know exactly what I'm looking for and I absolutely saw it. So. We are working every day. There's a lot of tiny details in doing these that people don't realize until you actually go to do it. You know, peer size, how you're gonna space them, the electronics, the internet, the type of building style, laying the concrete, what the dimensions of the building are gonna be, roof pitch, everything. There's a million little things. And so if you guys are interested and wanna be a part of the journey with us, please shoot me an email, ryan at darkrangersinc. I do think they're gonna fill up fast, but like I said, the goal is to get this first building open here before winter and then continue if the demand is there to expand going forward. Really excited about this and I'm excited to have you guys on the journey with me. If you are just here to enjoy the content on YouTube, once we're able to get this up and running and I'm able to make this my full-time pursuit, I promise I will be back to regular videos at least a few times a month and trying to get back to once a week. Uh, all types from reviews to processing to updates on the observatory itself. And it'll be awesome to be able to showcase all of that with the best data possible. So stay tuned, be patient with us. Any words of encouragement or help would be much appreciated. And guys, as always, until the next one, clear skies.